class of introduction to solid mechanics i hope you all are safe and doing well so in the last class i have seen the shear stress in beam for rectangular triangular and solid circular section and after that i have derived the shear stress expression for diamond section so in the rectangular section we have seen the maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis and the value is maximum shear stress is 1.5 times the average shear stress similarly in the solid circular section we have seen the maximum shear stress is 1.33 times the average shear stress and in a triangular channel we have seen the maximum shear stress at the neutral axis is 4 by 3 times tau average and maximum shear stress occurs at a distance of h by 2 and that is 1.5 times the average shear stress similarly we have seen the max maximum shear stress in the diamond section and it is coming 9 by 8 times the average shear stress and it is coming h by 4 distance from the neutral axis so today i will solve some problems related to these topics and after that i will derive the shear stress expression for i section and d section so let us take one problem a simply supported hollow rectangular beam of outside width 200 mm outside depth 160 mm and material thickness material thickness 20 mm is subjected to is subjected to UDL of 10 kN per meter for entire span of 10 meter find maximum shear stress induced in the beam so a hollow section So this is the section outside dimension is 200 mm overall depth is 160 mm and the thickness is 20 20 mm so we know the shear stress shear stress tau is equal to v by i into B into A Y bar. So for a simply supported beam, maximum shear force will occur at the support and the magnitude is W L by 2. So the load is 10 kN per meter and the span is 10 divided by 2. So maximum shear force comes at the support that is 50 kN. Similarly moment of inertia moment of inertia can be computed as total moment of inertia B dQ by 12 minus 200 minus 2 into 20 into 160 minus 2 into 20 whole q divided by 12 overall rectangular section is dimension is 200 by 160 and minus internal dimension is 200 minus 40 and depth is 160 minus 2 into 20 so it is coming moment of inertia 135 6 set into 10 to the power 4 divided by 3 mm 4.
B at neutral axis is 2 into 20 that is 40 mm. A Y bar can be computed. Area is 200 into 20 into y bar is 70 plus 2 times 60 into 20 into 30 area is 200 this area is 200 into 20 so let us assume this is neutral axis neutral axis so from this if i take the cg y1 bar and similarly for y2 bar so a1 is 200 into thickness is 20 and into y bar is entire depth is 80 mm so 80 minus this is 20 so 20 by 2 70 so 200 into 20 into 70 similarly we can write 20 into this height is 60 so 20 into 60 and the cg is 60 by 2 that is 30 so it is 2 times so it is coming 3 5 2 triple 0 mm cube so shear stress is v by ib into a y bar so maximum shear stress is 50 into if i converted into newton into a y bar is 35 to triple 0 divided by i moment of inertia is 13568 into 10 to the power 3 into b is 40 so it is coming 9.73 newton per mm square so the shear stress is coming 9.73 into newton per mm square and that is the maximum shear stress occurs in a simply supported hollow rectangular beam so dear learner i have solved one problem based on the shear stress on the hollow rectangular beam in which we have computed the value of shear stress so shear stress a simply supported beam having udl is given so with the help of we know that for a simply supported beam having udl so the maximum shear force will occur at the support and the magnitude is wl by 2 so with the help of that we have computed the maximum shear force occurs in the beam similarly moment of inertia is computed for hollow, hollow, hollow section that is capital b into capital db uh, dq by 2l minus small b into small dq by 2l so with the help of that we have computed the moment of inertia and the width at which we have to compute the neutral, uh, shear stress that is 2 times 20 that is 40 mm and with the help of that we have computed the shear stress maximum shear stress in the for the given hollow beam so after that i am going to discuss another expression that is very important in the civil engineering aspects that is i section so in i section i will derive how the shear stress will vary in the flange and wave portion and after that i will draw the shear stress distribution for the i section and similarly i will draw the Shear, uh, shear stress distribution for the T section and other section also. So shear stress in I section. So let us assume this is the I section. So this is the I section. overall depth of the i section is capital D and this is the neutral axis and the depth of wave is D. So in i section this portion is known as flange portion. This is also flange portion and this portion is known as wave portion. So, 
कैपिटल बी इज द विथ ऑफ फ्लेंज कैपिटल बी इज द विथ ऑफ फ्लेंज टी इज द थिकनेस ऑफ फ्लेंज थिकनेस ऑफ फ्लेंज एंड लेट एस एज्यूम दिस इज जेड सो जेड इज द थिकनेस ऑफ Z is the thickness of web. Capital D is the overall overall depth of I section, and small D is the depth of web section. So I am going to derive the expression of shear stress. in the i section so this is flange portion and this is the web portion i have taken this is overall depth capital d flange width is b and flange thickness is t and this is also i have assumed t and this is the neutral axis neutral axis and this is d so we know a y bar is equal to a1 y1 bar plus a2 y2 bar plus A three y three bar plus so on and so forth. So a y bar can be computed as if I assume this is the section I have taken, and this is the distance from y from the neutral axis. So a a y bar is b into Overall depth is d, and d minus d. So this one plus this one. So b into d minus d by two. That is the area, and the central distance is d by two plus cg. So d by two plus d minus d by four. Similarly, this thickness is t into d by 2 minus y into y plus d by 2 minus y divided by 2. so a y bar is equal to b into d square minus d square by this is 2 d minus d so d capital d Minus d by two into capital D minus d by two four. So b, d square minus d square by eight plus t into d square by four minus y square by two. T into d by two minus y and this is two y and min minus y. So y plus d by two. So d by two plus y into d by two minus y. So it is d square by four a square minus b square divided by So this is the a y bar. Similarly, moment of inertia. Moment of inertia r is equal to. So moment of inertia can be computed as total. If I compute the total portion, assume as a rectangle portion. So the moment of inertia is b into d q by two l. But we have to reduce subtract this portion so minus so what is the width of this so this is entire width is b and minus t so this portion is b minus t so and two times it is b minus t by 2 b minus t by 2 so b minus t into 
d माइनस टू टी होल क्यू डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेल्व सो इट इज कमिंग बी डी क्यू बाई ट्वेल्व माइनस बी माइनस टी इंटू डी माइनस टू टी इज नथिंग बट डी माइनस टी कैपिटल डी माइनस टू टी दैट इज स्मॉल डी डी क्यू बाई ट्वेल्व सो दिस इज द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया बी माइनस टी डी माइनस टू टी कैपिटल डी माइनस दिस टी एंड दिस टी सो इट इज स्मॉल डी सो आई एव रिटर्न स्मॉल डी दैट इज मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया so shear stress can be written in flange so shear stress shear stress in wave w is equal to v upon ib into a y bar and b is here t so shear stress in wave is v upon i into T and a y bar we have computed b into d square minus d square by eight plus t into d square by four minus y square divided by two. So this is the expression of shear stress in wave. We can also retain x in the simple form. So once a common v into d square minus d square divided by 8i into b by t plus v upon 2i tt cancel so d square by 4 minus y square so we can also write in the simplest form similarly shear stress in flange tau a flange portion so shear stress in flange so a y bar if i write in the flange portion so b into d by 2 minus y into y plus d by 2 minus y divided by 2 so it is coming b into d square by 4 minus y square by 2 so shear stress shear stress in flange tau f is equal to v upon ib so v into b d square by 4 minus y square divided by 2 into i into b so shear stress in the flange is coming v upon 2i d square by 4 minus y square so when shear stress will be maximum so at y is equal to d by 2 means y is equal to d by 2 means at this portion what will be the shear stress so shear stress in flange is equal to v by 8i d square minus d square and similarly shear stress in wave portion shear stress in wave is v by at i d square minus d square into b by t so if i draw the distribution of the i section this is the i section this is the neutral axis 
neutral axis so if i draw the distribution of this shear stress so when y is equal to d by 2 plus t or y is equal to capital d by capital d by 2 so shear stress is zero So the shear stress distribution it is coming. So the maximum shear stress is occur at the neutral axis. So when at the at this portion shear stress is this shear stress is V upon A tie D square minus D square and from this para before parabolic section and this portion is V D square by A tie. This is parabolic. This is also parabolic. And this magnitude is coming. V upon A tie D square minus D square into b by t so these are the shear stress distribution in the i section so shear stress this is the shear stress distribution when this distance is d by 2 this distance is capital d by 2 and similarly this is the symmetric about the neutral axis so when y is equal to capital D by 2 so we can see shear stress in the flange y is equal to capital D by 2 so shear stress in the flange d square by 4 and d by 2 whole square so it is coming 0 so shear stress distribution is 0 similarly when y is equal to exactly d by 2 means at this point so shear stress in the flange is v by 2i d square by 4 minus small d square by 4 so it is coming d v by a i d square by 4 and 4 is I have taken out so it is coming V by A tie D square minus D square and when Y is equal to D by 2 so shear stress in the wave the expression of shear stress in the wave is this so this this one is same as and additionally the V by A tie D square minus D square B by T so V by A tie D square minus D square into B by T so the total shear stress at this portion is V upon a tie d square minus d square plus v upon a tie d square minus d square into b by t similarly when y is equal to 0 so maximum shear stress will occur and the maximum shear stress that is when y is equal to 0 so it is coming v upon v into d square by d square into a tie b by t plus v by 2i into d square by 4 means v, v d square by a t i so the maximum shear stress is this one similarly this is the symmetric cross section so same thing above the neutral axis will be mirror image of below the neutral axis similarly i can draw the shear stress distribution let us take t section t section so if this is the t section this is t section so similarly we can compute the expression of shear stress let us assume this is the neutral axis neutral axis so shear stress distribution can be computed same thing this portion is wave portion and this portion is flange portion so shear stress can be computed
and the maximum shear stress is coming this is the expression and this is maximum shear stress is coming at this point neutral axis so this is the distribution of shear stress in case of T section similarly we can draw the shear stress distribution in H section so if I draw the shear stress distribution in H section so it is coming So this is the shear stress distribution in H section. And we have already seen in a circular section, solid circular section, maximum shear stress is occur at the neutral axis. And similarly, we have seen in a triangular section, so if this is the neutral axis, so we have seen the maximum shear stress will not occur at the neutral axis, it is at a distance of, so this is the maximum tau max and this is tau neutral axis. So it is at a distance of h by 2 from the altitude, sorry, b, uh, from the apex. Similarly, for we have seen the, for a diamond section, we have seen the shear stress distribution. So if this is the diamond section, so shear stress distribution is This is the maximum tau max and this is maximum tau max and this distance is from the neutral axis this is neutral axis so maximum shear stress is h by 4 h by 4 if this is b and this is h so we have discussed all the cases so let us take one problem another problem with the help of that we can easily clear the our concept so a rectangular beam this 10 centimeter wide is subjected to a maximum shear force of 50,000 Newton the corresponding maximum shear stress being 3 Newton per mm square so a rectangular beam is given having width is 10 centimeter and depth we have to compute and the maximum shear stress is given and we know that in rectangular beam maximum shear stress will occur at the neutral axis and the maximum shear stress is how much 3 newton per mm square so what is the depth of the beam so we know in a rectangular beam maximum shear stress is 3 by 2 times average shear stress and the maximum shear stress is 3 by 2 times shear force divided by area and the maximum shear stress is 3 so 1.5 times and v is given how much v is given 5 into 10 to the power 4 newton and width is given width is 100 width is given in the question that is 10 centimeter so it is 100 mm into d so d can be computed 250 mm or 25 centimeter so dear learner today i have discussed about the some problems related to the shear stress in beam and after that i have computed the expression of shear stress in the i section and we have seen the distribution of shear stress 
across the depth in the I section. After that we have see the various distribution in the various section like T section, H section. We have seen how the shear stress will vary. And after that I have solved one problem related to the shear stress in the rectangular beam. So in the coming class I will discuss some problems related to shear stress in the beam and after that I will start the another chapter in the introduction to solid mechanics that is spring. So for more updates you can also visit my civil engineering blogs talktorashid.blogspot.com. So take care of your health and happy learning.